This is the time course and cycle of citations and usage. Usage is in green, citations are in red. First uh, a paper, a preprint or a postprint is, is, post, is deposited, then it's um, downloaded sometimes, and the downloads are sometimes read, and uh, from reading them they might get cited. And then uh, the citing article might be downloaded, which generates more um, uh, citations, which again generates more downloads. That's the interaction between downloads and citations. Later I'll show you cumulative download and citation graphs. This is the early access advantage. Open access is accelerating the research cycle from access to usage to citation. Open access articles are being cited sooner and sooner, sometimes as soon as a few weeks after they've been self-archived. These data are from the physics archive. This graph shows that higher early download counts are predictive of higher later citations. So um, if in the first six months an article tends to be downloaded more, then it's likely that uh, in a year and a half or two or, uh, or earlier it will be cited more as well. This is especially useful for uh, comparing and evaluating w work in its early stages when it hasn't yet had a chance to get many citations. You may already get um, differences at the level of downloads and this is also useful for evaluating uh, junior faculty that haven't yet had a chance to get many citations but may already have downloads. The self-archiving mandate should be to deposit all articles, not just some articles, all refereed journal articles, to deposit them in the institutional repository, not a central repository. Central repositories can harvest later. And that to deposit them immediately upon acceptance for publication, not after a delay or an embargo. Here are some URLs that describe what the uh, optimal mandate is and why. I'll leave, leave you time to look at the URLs. You can also find them. Uh, this, this PowerPoint as well as the PowerPoint movie will be online, so you can always find them by uh, uh, clicking. The ideal mandate is, of course, immediate deposit and immediate open access. But if there's any delay in getting that kind of a mandate uh, uh, adopted or cons consensus on that uh, mandate adopted at your institution, then um, a compromise is almost as good and highly recommended. It's the immediate deposit delayed open access mandate. The IDOA compromise mandate is that the author's final peer-reviewed draft must be deposited immediately upon acceptance for publication, but access to it can be set as either open access or closed access for a limited period, preferably no more than six months. The majority of journals, 63%, already endorse immediate green open access self-archiving. That means that 63% of deposits a final drafts can, can be made open access immediately with the publisher's blessing. And this includes the top journals uh, for the most part. I'll give you a solution for the remaining 37% which uh, are if, if the author elects to place them in, open, in uh, closed access. For the articles in the 37% of journals that have an embargo policy, the free ePrints institutional repository creating software has an ePrint request button. If an article is deposited as closed access rather than open access, any user on the web can still reach it via search uh, with any of the search engines and, uh, or directly in the repository. It's just that they can't get the article directly. They have to press the Request a Copy button. When you've pressed Request a Copy, this page appears where you can insert your email and say you need a copy for research purposes and then press again. As soon as the requester presses the request a copy button, the author receives an email like this, in which uh, they're asked, uh, they're, they're informed of the request, and all they have to do is uh, click accept. And if they do, then the uh, ePrint is immediately sent automatically by the software to the requester. 
This isn't open access because it requires a few extra keystrokes, but it's almost open access and it covers all deposits and not just the deposits that are, uh, with, uh, that are uh, endorsed for immediate deposit by the publisher and it's completely legal. The free ePrints University repository software generates rich and potentially even richer usage metrics. It can be used for showcasing, navigating, comparing, and assessing. Here is a sample of university research usage metrics for Southampton author Tim Berners-Lee. This page allows you to generate graphs and tables for uh, individual users or for groups or for uh, topics. I'll let you look at it at your leisure. Here's a sample of the kinds of usage metrics uh, that IR Stats provides for you if you've deposited your articles. Here's some of the data for Tim Berners-Lee, but don't expect to have such high counts for most of your papers. These local ePrints University repository usage metrics from IR Stats are then complemented by Citebase, which provides global citation, download, citation, co-citation, hub authority, and time course metrics. Citebase is a scientometric search engine, and you specify the author or the title or the, or the topic the way you do in a usual search engine. Citebase then allows you to rank order your uh, results by uh, paper citations, by author citations, by paper hits, by author hits, hub authority scores, co-citedness, and eventually many other metrics, and even combinations of metrics that will be weighted according to how important they are in a given field or in a given search. Here is a demonstration vanity search I did on a paper of my own, uh, and I'm asking here for uh, rank ordering in terms of citations. Uh, you'll find that lots of authors are interested in vanity searches, and that's another one of the rewards of um, self-archiving and self-archiving mandates. The same search can then be reordered in terms of uh, um, hit um, download counts instead of citation counts, and uh, I don't want to give the impression that uh, all of this is just about vanity. In fact, it's very important, as I said, in the evaluation of research and research funding, and it's also important for scientometric analysis of trends and impact in uh, the growth of knowledge. Here are some more metrics, this time <coughs> chronometrics, time-based metrics. You'll see that uh, the red curve is the uh, growth of citations, and the green curve is the growth of uh, downloads. The, this article was published in 1990 and the metrics only became available much later. That's why the download curve comes much later than the citation curve. But for a new paper, the downloads, of course, come first and they predict the citations. These are cumulative downloads and, and citations, so you can get, get a good idea of the growth of the influence of a paper. And you can also predict from it and compare with it. Here's an OA summary. How to provide open access? Universities and funders mandate green open access self-archiving. Mandate deposit where? In the university's own institutional repositories. Deposit how? A few minutes of keystrokes per paper. Deposit what? The author's final revised peer-reviewed draft, the postprint. Deposit when? Immediately upon acceptance for publication. The immediate deposit optional access mandate is the default mandate, the compromise mandate that fits every case and that's the easiest to reach a consensus on. If you can't reach a consensus on a stronger mandate quickly, adopt IDOA. Above all, don't succumb to gold fever. The fastest and surest road to open access is green. Gold has been distracting us and diverting us for years now Open access does not mean open access publishing, it means open access, and it's about access. Here are the three principal reasons why open access and mandating open access are important for a university. The first is to, to maximize the uptake, 
usage, applications, and impact of the research output of the university. The second is to measure and reward the uptake, usage, applications, and impact through research metrics. And the third is to collect and showcase and manage a permanent record of the uptake of the uh, research output and impact of the university. Thanks for listening.